This is Noir Alley, and I'm your host, Eddie Muller. This week, we're trolling through the New York underworld via the back lots and sound stages of 20th Century Fox. From 1953, it's Pick Up on South Street, one of the finest films from legendary writer, producer, director Samuel Fuller. Now, legendary is not a word I toss around lightly, but in this case, it's almost an understatement. Not only is Sam Fuller one of the world's great storytellers, he's one of the essential Americans of the 20th century, having lived a life more thoroughly and productively than most human beings could even imagine. In fact, Fuller didn't live just one life, he lived three, even four lives. The Massachusetts-born son of Russian-Jewish immigrants started his professional journey as a teenager in New York's newspaper business, where he became one of the youngest crime reporters in the nation. He was in the midst of parlaying all that Depression-era experience into another career as a novelist and screenwriter when he enlisted in the Army, serving with the 16th Infantry Regiment, 1st Infantry Division, the famed Big Red One. He survived the D-Day beachhead at Normandy and fought beside fellow dog faces on campaigns through North Africa and Europe, eventually becoming one of the first U.S. soldiers to document, on film, the horrors of the Nazi concentration camps. Now, following the war, Fuller became a prolific scriptwriter and eventually one of the most creative and dynamic self-taught triple threats in the business, writing, producing, and directing two dozen movies in his inimitable style. Sam Fuller is the genuine definition of another word I use sparingly. He is truly an auteur. Spinning yarns was as natural and essential to the man as breathing. He wrote hundreds of stories and screenplays, only a fraction of which have been produced. The story to pick up on South Street may bear a credit for Dwight Taylor, but that's a weird studio technicality. This is a Sam Fuller story through and through, and the resulting film is one of his best because its independent and iconoclastic creator benefited from the backing of a major studio. Daryl F. Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox, held Fuller in the highest regard, both for his military record, Bronze Star, Silver Star, Purple Heart, and for his ability to hammer out stories that were thrilling and topical in equal measure. Fuller got his first directing credit in early 1949 as part of a three-picture deal with low-budget indie producer Robert Lippert. The last of those films, the 1951 Korean War drama The Steel Helmet, impressed Zanuck so much he gave Fuller a seven-picture deal at Fox. Although Fuller wrote in many different genres, his best and most personal films are at heart war stories. And today's film is no exception. Sure, it's a noirish drama about the life of a KG Manhattan thief who one day picks the wrong pocket. But it's framed as a war story with an army of federal agents pitted against a cadre of communist spies. What sets Fuller's war stories apart is his complete disinterest in ideology. His empathy is with the foot soldiers, merely trying to survive. In this case, the soldiers are grifters, tarts, and stoolies trapped in the city's margins, folks on the bottom rung, eking out one more night in the big mean metropolis. Fuller had the compassionate worldview of a battle-hardened veteran, and it would bring him into direct conflict with the head of the FBI, a story I'll share on the back end. The original title of Fuller's story was Cannon, street lingo for a pickpocket. To avoid having people think this really was a war movie, the title had to be changed. Fuller liked pickpocket, but Zanuck thought it sounded too European. For the role of the cannon, however, Fuller got his first and only choice. Richard Widmark was a natural for the part of smart mouth and streetwise Skip McCoy. I was picked up. No resistance. You better make this stick. What did you do with the wallet you lifted from the girl? Back up the pitch with a charge and drive me back to my shack. I'll drive you back in a hearse if you don't get the kick out of your mouth. Now look, Buster. You've been whipping this squad long enough to know that a guy with my rating wouldn't grip the dame on the train. Not with three strikes on me. Uh, you... now, at this point, Widmark was leery of playing more criminals. 
But after reading the script, he realized that despite living outside the law, Skip was a charismatic anti-hero operating by his own code of ethics and honor. Now, this was the first time Fuller had directed a big studio star. And although they locked horns over little bits of business here and there, the result is one of the most vivid characters Widmark would ever play. Dozens of actresses tested for the role of Candy, the streetwalker stuck in a crossfire between the commies and the feds. One time Fox queen Betty Grable was considered, but she refused the part once she realized she would be playing a prostitute. Fuller then nixed Zanuck's suggestion to cast a rising Fox starlet, Marilyn Monroe. Instead, he went with Jean Peters, who wasn't even on his radar until he saw her walk through the studio commissary. Her unmannered, bow-legged stride was precisely what the character needed, and he cast her on the spot. Fuller's instincts weren't always dead on, but here he hit the bullseye. Peters is perfect. The ace in the deck, however, is Thelma Ritter as sage old grifter Mo Williams. This is one of Fuller's best characters, and Ritter delivers some of the choicest lines that Sam ever wrote. Stop using your hands, Skip, and start using your head. It earned Ritter one of her six Oscar nominations for Best Supporting Actress more than any other actress ever. Now, given that none of the film was actually shot in Manhattan, Thelma Ritter, born and bred in the Big Apple with the accent to prove it, supplied a big part of the film's New York vibe. Props as well to art director Lyle Wheeler, who transformed Fuller's vision of New York, a mix of veracity and hyperbole, into an array of striking sets, brilliantly photographed by cameraman Joe McDonald. So here's today's riddle. What do you get when you give Sam Fuller a 20-day shooting schedule, a budget of $780,000, and some of the best craftsmen in Hollywood? You get a movie that's damn near perfect. You get pickup on South Street.